Uh, now, a new report has found it's increasingly difficult for students to express dissenting political views on campus. It comes in the wake of examples of high-profile speakers, from Jermaine Greer to Jordan Peterson, being no platform for holding views that some activists say are beyond the pale. The research by Policy Exchange is co-authored by Professor Eric Kaplan, who joins me now. Professor, welcome to you. Who's being no platformed and why? Well, we have another incident of a, uh, an artist, uh, a feminist artist, who has been accused of transphobia um, at Oxford Brookes University, mm. who's um, essentially been cancelled. And how democratic is, uh, we saw the story, this was, um, this was earlier this week, wasn't it? How yeah. democratic is the decision-making process that results in that person having their booking rescinded? Well, I don't think it's democratic at all, really. It's a, a set of very highly networked, radical um, trans activist students and their allies who are able to, to network and marshal pressure on the university, and then the university has capitulated uh, and agreed to cancel this event. So I think the majority of students and faculty are simply not involved in this. Do you accept that uh, universities have a responsibility uh, to make sure that their, the, their student body isn't offended? Uh, no, I don't. I think part of the point of the university is, in fact, to expose people to ideas which they may find offensive, and they have to learn uh, the arguments against those ideas. So good ideas uh, should drive out bad ideas, and protecting students from all forms of offense, or even from most form of forms of offense, should not be part of the university's remit. Where do we draw the line in terms of the harm that's caused, the harm principle? Well, in the law, it's, it's incitement of violence or libel, which is the boundary, and I think that's, that's a reasonable boundary to observe. I think there are, um, there are arguments, people who make the argument that emotional safety is more important than uh, expressive and academic liberty, and I think that's a big error. Uh, and I certainly think universities should be more at the academic liberty and ex expressive freedom end of things than the rest of the society. It, it's their job to be debating ideas which may be taboo in the rest of society, not actually to be uh, leading the way in terms of enforcing those taboos, which seems to be the case at the moment. Uh, the examples you mentioned, and indeed the, the, the two names I listed in my introduction, Jermaine Greer and Jordan Peterson, uh, these are people who are, are seen as part of the culture wars, uh, uh, they've castigated some of the aspects of identity politics, but your research also suggests that sort of old-fashioned political viewpoints in the context, for instance, of the, the, the Brexit vote and the leave or remain status of students is also a factor. Well, there's two separate issues. One is the no platforming, of which there are actually very relatively few incidents, but more than that, it's sort of the wider chill climate that can occur uh, in an institution where you have a very dominant view. So if there's roughly eight students who are Remainers for every one Brexiteer, um, and, and what this means is partly that it's very difficult in a classroom setting for Brexiteers to speak up. So only uh, fewer than four in 10 Brexit voting or supporting students said they would be comfortable raising that viewpoint in class compared to almost nine in 10 uh, remainers being comfortable to express a remain view. And I think that's, that's a negative, because ultimately you want these two views to exchange, you want people to understand the other side, to bring society together and to improve uh, dialogue. Isn't it true though, Eric, that you know, students have always been, uh, generally speaking, more left-wing, by dint of being you know, young and intellectual before they're mugged by reality when they're a little older? Yeah, absolutely, and, and that's fine. And actually we find there's a significant chunk of students who are very pro-free speech, uh, a chunk who are pro-emotional safety, and about 40% who are floating in between. Um, so yeah, I think there's always been that, but I think it's up to the university and who, has a res who have a responsibility, I think, to uh, promote the value of academic freedom, and it's, it's a responsibility that they're largely not promoting. Uh, whereas they're taking emotional safety uh, much more seriously, the, the equity diversity side of things is institutionalized. One of the things we point out in our report is there's almost no institutional procedural backing for uh, promoting academic freedom in, and teaching the value of that to students. So that's one of the things our report uh, recommends needs to be addressed. I thought, I thought the government had said it would get involved and there would be a regulator trying to make sure that freedom of speech was respected on campus. Well, I think these are abstract statements, but when it comes to on-the-ground um, institutionalization, it's extremely weak, uh, because simply there are fewer activists who are interested in pushing that agenda compared to, for example, an emotional safety agenda. And it's really down to, people will, will agree with um, academic freedom in the abstract, but when there is a contest between that 
and the feelings of students, the emotional safety, that will tend to take precedence in many cases. And so that's really, it's, it's about correcting this imbalance uh, and institutionalizing more uh, protections for academic freedom. That's really what we're talking about in this report. Eric Kaufman, really good to talk to you. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much.